amazed and psyched to have Mark Whitfield in the house. He playing a little bit. I, I got a ways to go here. I don't want you to stop. I hate interrupting you to begin with. Let me tell you a little bit about Mark. First, first of all, been on our radar screen for a really, really long time. He, he played on some of my favorite organ trio albums of all time. Watched and listened to his career over the years. Um, finally, our schedules meshed, and he's here, and we've been collaborating on this first True Fire course. And I emphasize first, because we're going to be doing many, many of them with this gentleman. This one's called The Soul of Jazz, and we'll tell you all about it in a second. But um, there's no better testimony than the company that he keeps to attest why, you know, the New York Times calls him the best young guitarist in the business. Um, he's collaborated over the years with Dizzy Gillespie, Art Blakey, Quincy Jones, Ray Charles, Herbie Hancock, Gladys Knight, Burton Bacharach, Jimmy Smith, Clark Terry, Wynton Marsalis, Branford, Joe Williams, Stanley Turrentine, and uh, who he calls his greatest teacher and mentor, George Benson. But recently, and thus what the soul of jazz is all about, is uh, he certainly paid his dues playing pretty straight ahead stuff back in the day. But recent collaborations have really kind of expanded his palette. He's worked with Sting, Steven Tyler, D'Angelo, Mary J. Blige, John Mayer, Chaka Khan. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on and on. He's got 14 solo recordings to his credit and dozens of albums as a sideman. And what we discovered much to our delight, and I'm sure it's going to thrill you too, Mark is a passionate and very, very talented educator. So um, we're going to give you a sneak peek at what this course, the solo jazz, is all about. And now we can talk. Thank you, man. Welcome to True Fire. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So, you know what's cool, and this this tends to happen, you know, like timing is, you know, it's sort of everything, right? Always. Like, um, So we've been, you know, tracking you. I've been listening to you forever, right? And we go to the Blue Note, and um, the great Robert Gasper is, you know, he's put together a thing for the, and incredible music. Mm -hmm. And I think it was about halfway through the set, he calls you up on the yes. stage, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, look who it is, you know? And, you know, you blew everybody's minds, and you, you. it was just incredible. We got to talk with you a little bit. And uh, I think we planted a good seed that night to, hey, you know, carve out a little time. Come on down here to True Fire. Let's do something, right? So thank you for coming. Well, listen, first of all, thank you for inviting me. I'm always uh, uh, surprised, uh, pleased, flattered, uh, uh, floored when, when people who love music also love me <laughs> or just have been listening or paying attention to what I'm doing. Uh, um, it's just, I, you know, I play music that I love to play, and I'm fortunate to play it with people that, I, that I've known a long time. Even Robert, I, I met him when he was a high school senior. Really? He master class at, at, at his high school, the uh -huh. Houston School of Performing Arts. And I remember just talking to him briefly. He asked me about college advice. Should I go to the new school in, in New York or go uh -huh. to Berkeley in Boston? I suggested he go to the new school, and I gave him my phone number. And I said, man, if you get to New York, you know, whatever, give me a call. I ran yeah. into him on the street. Uh -huh. And he said a lot of guys that he'd met when he was in high school gave, but I was the only one that, you know, that when he called, took his call, gave really? him a gig. And, and uh, he hired him. He played, he played a couple of um, some of my recordings and traveled with me. Uh, and then when he, now he's a huge star, and he reaches out and, and invites me to come along. And it's just nice to see, uh, to, to have played a small part in the development of some other musicians as well. You sure did, man. I mean... Uh, well, number one, of course, great player you are, Thank but you. you're very likable and you're uh, you're very generous too. I mean, you'll take the music where the music needs to go. It's not a self indulgent thing for you. You know, why don't you talk about what what you mean by the soul of jazz? What does that mean? Well, it's uh, um, for me, it's a, it's a very simple equation. Um, the things, you know, the things that come together, the, the elements that come together that form the kind of music that I've always uh, gravitated towards, um, feeling, rhythm, uh, um, uh, fire, uh, uh, something, that, something that, you know, can make you cry, can make you laugh, make you smile, and feel good about the entire experience. Also, um, something about, about music that's timeless. 
because I, you know, uh, I've been playing professional, you know, professionally recording and traveling for a number of years now. And even, you know, in, in that short time for me, uh, what's a snapshot in history is just, I've seen a lot of styles of music, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fans come and go. But the things that are timeless, uh, the, the, style, the styles that are timeless and the elements are always uh, those mo the, the, the most human parts of music, the soulful things. And I know we often, uh, uh, we often uh, think of or, or think of the word soul in terms of a specific style mm -hmm. or a lick or a kind of a blues thing. But I learned this early on when I, when I was very fortunate to play with the great Jack McDuff. And mind you, when I got us, when I finished school at Berkeley, I, my, I wanted to j jump right into the, to the heavy music scene. And, you know, I wanted to play with Jack these net special this, and I wanted to play with you know, all these guys. And I just I wasn't ready yet. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and what I thought that meant was I, I wasn't technically proficient enough, you know, which I, I wasn't. But I was going to get there. What I didn't know is that the, the, one of the things I hadn't gotten in touch with, I hadn't yet made a spiritual connection between my imagination's ear and that, 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 that it, your, in, your, my inner spirit, my soul, and the music that I love. Mm -hmm. And once I began to, uh, Jack, and that was all Jack McDuff required. Mm -hmm. And everything else he would throw to the side. Mm -hmm. And whenever I, and it was kind of trial by fire, he fired me every night for the first couple of weeks. <laughs> right? <laughs> he, he would say, that was horrible, you're fired. <laughs> but now tomorrow night, what I need you to do. <laughs> and so what, what I, you know, fi once I got over the shock of that, I understood that to, me, to mean basically all the things that I didn't like about what you play, I don't bring those back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Leave that behind. Mm -hmm. Here's what I like. Uh, uh, w when you play... Focus, I don't care how, if, whether it's fast or slow or complicated or simple or sophisticated or, or make sure every note you play is intended to reach every person in here. Wow. So look up because the music's not in here. It's yeah. out here. Wow. Look at me. Look at the guys around you. Become mm -hmm. aware of, if you want to play by yourself, you were doing that at home, right? You know, mm -hmm. you, but if you, if, if you want to get up off the couch and play for people mm -hmm. and see where that takes you, how that will enrich your, uh, your humanity, your life, your soul, your experiences, um, this is what you got. This is where you start. And uh, I only stayed with Jack for about two years, and then and then I, I got I signed a deal with Warner Brothers and moved mm -hmm. on and kind of started on my own. But he gave me so much uh, um, guidance, and and he op and he and he really opened the door. It was the conduit to me opening the, opening mm -hmm. the door to the heart of the music that I wanted to play. And I take mm -hmm. and I take that feeling, uh, and and that intent everywhere into every genre. You know, which is. Which is incredible. I mean, he is, um, you know, a remarkable teacher oh, in yeah. his own way. You know, sure. um, what's interesting is, you know, that's largely the lesson you teach us here in this course, the soul of jazz. You know, let's describe um, it's a it, this a, cra a crazy cool curriculum. You take 10 situations. Right. And um, we start with. A, a, a rhythm pattern, a drum beat, basically. Right. And then you tell us, you know, w what you're hearing and feeling, mm -hmm. you know, in your soul on that beat. And then you talk about if you're in this situation, this is how might you you might approach it comping wise. And this mm -hmm. is how you might approach it soloing wise. Yes. Shall we give folks just a taste of that? I Pick, would love to. Let, Tommy, what 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 situation can we start with here? Two? Start with situation two. Okay. Are we going to start with with the track, the drum track? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I like it. So this reminds me of my of my early experience um uh, like the reason I, it's, it's great that we refer to these as situations because ex that's exactly what they are historically for me. So I, I got a call. George Benson did a record, a, a recording project with Bluey, the guy who, who, who uh, leads and produces the group Incognito. Mm -hmm. And it was a George Benson record. And it, when it was done, it was it was brilliant, but for whatever reason, Verve didn't want it. Mm -hmm. So Bluey, he refused to just let the vibe go. And they reached out to me and asked me to come to London and, and do a record with them under uh, another name. The group was called Inner Shade. Mm -hmm. And it was all of these tracks. It's with this sound, it was my. It was the first time I had ever come, you know, been, been faced with the challenge of, of trying to integrate uh, uh, the spirit and the soul of the jazz, of the music that I play, right, in, into these sort of patterns, uh, a, a rhythmic pattern that is repetitive, but but the the variations are subtle, mm -hmm. and so 
uh, really, in, in a, it, just in a snapshot, of time, I had to lock onto something, come up with a pattern. That, that, you know, if you play around with the sounds, and if we play the the, the beat again, I'll show you the, how how where, where I found a progression that made sense. And also, what's great about this particular loop, it's got no bass drum in it, mm. so it leaves space at the bottom for me to play uh, sort of sort of sort of high and low at the same time. <laughs> So there are all these, this room for all of this variation. Mm -hmm. I can make it simpler, or I, I, I can make it, you know, more complex. But I find that playing something simple, just something like that, then gives me a nice mm -hmm. foundation, a palette on which to build. So let's try it. Let's all roll right. the track, okay, and see what you do. All right, here okay. it is. struggled with you know should we use the word jazz in the title of this course because you you know the we we we've talked for two days about how the lines between genres are really blurred sure. now and um that contemporary players like yourself you know are diving into all different styles of music and mm -hmm. kind of mixing it up and cre so you know that you know a traditional jazz player probably wouldn't call that a traditional jazz beat you know of course not but at the same right. time a lot of those voicings are rooted. everything about what i right. played is all about traditional that's jazz. right sure. it's and i and i think it, i think it's you know early especially early on in my, you know, we we focused on being able to, to define or having to define or wanting to de define genres of music very specifically by the by the rhythm and the, and the instrumentation mm -hmm. and and that was and, and, it, and that was useful for me as a young musician just in terms of having one thing to focus on mm -hmm. at a time learn how to play like this you, can, you know each rhythmic palette sort of has its own discipline right but now that I'm a little older a little more experienced and can yeah. and can look back and, and the over and, and see all the similarities yeah that, that's why that, that's what's blurring the line yeah it's not that music is becoming homogenized. It's that we, uh, we as as older musicians, we're starting to see all the common threads between these 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 genres of music that people fought so hard to keep separate. Yeah. Well, what a great thing. Yeah, you know? I, um, absolutely. Um, I think we'll see a lot more of that. So in the course, you'll mm -hmm. analyze that drum beat. You'll talk about it. You'll show us how you might approach comping over it, and then mm -hmm. you'll solo over it, right? Yes. Tommy, can you roll that track so Mark can demonstrate that? tell you this the course Tommy how many hours in the course uh, I would say we have close to five hours okay wow. so um, Mark drills deep on the comping on the beat on the solo we we don't have time for that mm -hmm. but this course is jam-packed with really incredible insight it's been well, number one uh, no one's ever done a curriculum like this with the I think we have uh, over 900 courses now no one's ever kind of touched this and what's cool about it is it's real world 
You know, you'll right. show up someplace at the gym, at your buddy's house, on right. a recording gig, and it's going to go down just like that. You're going to be just put like in this, that yeah. situation, yeah. and you're going to have to come up with something. And how you approach that, what you know, whatever style or combination of styles you play, the your guidance has been, you know, really just priceless, right? Thank you. Yeah. So um, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so, folks, uh, you want to know where your fans are tuned in from I right now? I would love now? to, yeah. Okay. We've got um, Galesburg, Michigan, Grand Rapids, Michigan. What do you have, family up there in Michigan or something? Uh, <laughs> Amen. Dayton, Bulgaria, Germany, uh, Hawaii, Dubuque. <laughs> Did I pronounce that? No. <laughs> Dubuque. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, how do you pronounce that? D Dubuque. Okay, Dubuque. Hawaii, <laughs> Beirut, Lebanon, right. Austria, Northumberland, England, Belgrade, Serbia, Naples, Florida, Placerville, California, Roswell, New Mexico. You know what happened at oh, Roswell, yeah, sure. right? Okay. Um, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Wow. I want to come to those towns right away. England, Rome, <laughs> Italy, Holland, Poland, Belgium, Montreal, Isle of Wight. Oregon, Switzerland, Cincinnati, Ohio, Czech Republic just chimed in. If we haven't shouted out to you, please let us know where you're tuned in from. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. You know, and I, I probably say this every broadcast, but amazing, the community of guitar players and music lovers all, sure. all over the world. And thankfully, because of some of the technologies we have available to us today, you know, we can connect you oh, know, yeah. it's amazing across borders. Reason, yeah. It doesn't matter what language you speak, race, creed, color, religion. You right. know, um, it's all about the soul of music. You know? Absolutely. Um, l the other bit of housekeeping is we're going to uh, Mark loves to answer questions. Post your questions <laughs> and um, and we'll do our best to get to all of them. Also, please, do you see the thumbs up? right underneath the video. If you're digging what you're seeing and hearing, please show your love and share your love by giving us a thumbs up um, there. And um, uh, after, uh, I, well, I'll do the trivia question right now. Mm -hmm. um, and don't post what you think the answer is in the thread. Do not do this, okay? So here's the trivia question for this broadcast. Uh, Mark played on a Jimmy Smith album back in 96, one of my favorites and one of the ones I referred to. Who played drums on that album that was nicknamed Pretty? Okay. You're going to go there. We just put a link in the thread. Don't post your answer in the thread, please. Click on that link. Post your answer. Uh, we, you know, we'll pick somebody out of everyone who had the right answer and give you a $100 gift card at too far. Cool deal. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, nice question too. <laughs> let's do. That is a good question. A good isn't question. It? Yeah. I love that album, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. Man. Thank you. Kill it. Kill it. Um, let's do another situation. How about Tommy? Which one you want to do? I think you had number three next, right, Mark? Yes, number three is great. Okay. Start with the jump tr jump track. Yep. Nice. Right. So this takes me takes me to the to, to the uh, back to some of those the breakbeat uh, inserts you'd find. Like the, you know, I, I got the, I had another situation. I was called to play on uh, D'Angelo's first record, Brown Sugar, and this is this was early on, even in my jazz career as a, as you know as a solo artist. As as a you know, I was pretty I was still pretty young. We, we recorded this in '92 or so, and I remember doing I was doing a concert with my trio at Queens College. And, and I got the call from Bob Power. Uh, and I wasn't living in New York. At this point, I had, I had moved to Louisiana. And so we were in town playing at Queens College and at concert hall there. They said, hey, can you swing by and uh, uh, play on this, on this record for this artist, D'Angelo? And he was brand new. No, you know, I didn't know him. And, and uh, uh, you know, I grew up on Long Island. So I figured I'm going to see a big, tall Italian kid named D'Angelo, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I figured he was a jazz musician. I didn't have, and you like, didn't I, have a clue, I didn't right? No idea. You show up at the studio, and, and, and I see my buddy Roy Hargrove was hanging out there because uh -huh. they were already friends. So Roy's uh -huh. there. And I saw some folks that I recognized. And here comes this kid, D'Angelo. And I was like, dude, that's the D'Angelo I thought I was going to see. What is this guy? And they played. And then, and, you know, and, 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 and so Bob Power 
shout out to, I love Bob, just a great, you know, legendary, uh, uh, ground, groundbreaking producer, the father, you know, production of, of Neo Soul for sure. He, and he started playing the tracks from, from some of the songs. And, and uh, this is early on in, pro, in the Pro Tools revolution as well. And so a lot of the stuff was sort of unquantized. And little, but it was just, uh, this, D'Angelo, this kid just had, uh, I mean, kid, whatever the same, but he just had this amazing concept for, for, uh, for layering harmonies and stacks and, and, and moving these phrases. And, and, and it's wonderful, it was the first time I'd come so I'd come, you know, come in contact with someone who could who could lay so far back on the time, you know, and and I and that's a, a very specific sort of you know jazz nerd thing to look at, which I love. But we always it, part of the rhythmic uh, attitude of, of jazz is it's it's uptight. We we sit up, you sit up, you know, and you you constant emotion is about moving forward. And one of the things that I that I learned uh, right away with them, with the Angela with my power working with them in this in this project, is the beauty and the, and and the, and the space and the and the relaxation, the breath that comes from leaning back and letting the music sort of flow, even if even if it's faster, where, where you know not, not not so much the tempo, just the attitude. And this beat sort of reminds me that this beat's got a little urgency to it. So so it, so it's got enough tension as it is, and so rhythmically, I want to play something. That, 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 ex that accentuates the spaces and it, it invites everyone to kind of breathe and relax and settle into the groove. Let's roll the track, see what you came up with. Right. And I'll have to be lead, right? Seventies guitar heroes, you know, people like Curtis Mayfield and Ernie Isley, and Absolutely. some of those things, you know, and, and play some double stops and and play the blues, and also look at the harmony from a, from a, from a more of an open perspective. So I'm, I'm I'm playing something around the key of D minor. often talk about the way you can you can approach the same approach the, the same chord progression from slightly you know from, from a different tonal source. So I'm looking I'm looking at this in the key of C and then the same riff in the key of F. So it just you know and it's funny how just going up a fourth or going up a fifth or going up they, they add, it adds uh, um, a spiritual flavor to it. You, you get a lift from 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 how from how bright the alternatives can sound. And so I, I like I like trying to be aware of those and, and, to, in, and injecting those into the music at a place where I feel like it's time for a change. Yeah, and um, again, footnote: while we're limited on time here, those parts. Mark explains in great detail, you know, in that particular set of lessons for this situation. And of course, everything's going to be tabbed out, and, you know, you'll have all that. But um, I earmarked this particular situation for myself because I want to learn that stuff. <laughs> um, okay, let's roll the track and let's see what you would improvise over that. Okay. Song. Okay. of um, why we struggle putting jazz in there and why it's so important that you fully understand what the scope of this course is. Everything's rooted mm -hmm. in the jazz traditions and the blues traditions and the soul traditions, but it's all great music. You know? Absolutely. 
Um, more shout outs for you. You've got fans apparently in Czech Republic. Hey, hey. Have you been there recently? I have. Okay. I have. The AMC trio, my guys in Prussia. I love them. There you go. <laughs> uh, Vermont, Portugal, Memphis, Lancaster, Memphis, folks probably dug that. Uh, Lancaster, Wichita, Oakland, San Diego, Fort Collins, Colorado, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Fresno, Ethiopia. Wow. Uh, Gresenik, Germany, Cape Town, South Africa, Rancho Cucamonga, California, and Wills Point, Texas. Crazy, right? Wow. I mean, look how many time zones that is. That's a lot. Um, hey, everybody. Folks are having breakfast or midnight snacks right now. Hey, man, drinks on me. It's got to be happy hour somewhere. <laughs> there you go. I'll, we'll take you up on that. Um, so let's do another situation. Okay. Tommy, what do you got for us? Uh, we're going to talk about number five. Ha, gotcha. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really fond of, of uh, some of the, some of the, uh, um, when I when I hear nowadays, I hear I hear people what they call throwback beats. They're going back to some of those uh, uh, groups, grooves from the early, from the '90s hip hop records, and then they go and then and then you hear harmonies taken from '70s soul music. And what I like about um, when I think about the word jazz or the idea of jazz in this context, and, I, and when we talk about the soul of jazz, for me, uh, soul also refers, you know, and I, and I love the way this, this was presented earlier, the soul, soul of jazz also represents the heart, you know, get, uh, uh, getting right to the center of what, of what makes the music special to people. And, and I, you know, um, uh, uh, to me, jazz represents, even though there's, there's some controversy as to whether or not what, what the word jazz represents, to me, it represents freedom. For because because that's what it, that's you know I remember being I'll just briefly tell I was uh, when with Jack McDuff we got to play in Eastern Europe before the fall of the, before the wall came down mm. and so in in, wow. in eighty eight I went with Andrew Beals Rudy Petschauer and of course the great Jack McDuff to uh, to Sofia Bulgaria we played to in Yugoslavia when it was still Yugoslavia you know uh -huh. and and uh, and we got, in, in Bulgaria specifically um we were these guys we got this great this great uh, uh, piano trio they came to our performance we played in the government pl a place for uh -huh. the government right and uh, but the people couldn't have jazz because apparently jazz represented uh, f freedom from the western point of view and it wasn't allowed but these guys had a, had an underground jazz club and when i say underground it was way underground you went into this building you went down four or five flights of stairs uh -huh. into you know four or five basements and they had a piano they had a, they had a club down there and they snuck and 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 uh, and people fighting for the opportunity to play to play to learn some records and hear some jazz and you know and and, and uh, I was so touched by uh, how important the opportunity was to play music and talk about music with them and and uh, um, I've never taken that for granted and so when I get the opportunity when you know when you know when you say I like to talk and I love to talk about jazz and play and share music because and and I don't think of what I do as being generous. Uh, only because, you know, I got to, when I, when I was a kid, I got to play, you know, when I met George Benson, or, uh, I got to hang out with Joe Pass, they, they wouldn't even have dreamed of asking you for money, to, to, whatever they, they were just honored to pass on the tradition and what all the things they had learned to somebody they thought who would work hard right. to carry it forward, right. you know, and, and that's kind of what it's all about, you know. Right, it sure is, man. And, and so I see that spirit, so when I, I, I bring that back to this beat, just this, anything that throw, that takes me back to, you know, to, to 20, 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh -huh. or paying homage, you know, homage to things that have happened before, I'm, all, I'm always a fan of it because you incorporate the past and then you build on it for the future. Beautiful. Well, let's roll that track, see what you came up with. All right. So I'm going to borrow from George Gershwin. You know, I kind of borrowed that from George Gershwin Summertime. That's right, Summertime. Uh -huh. Nice. Right. 
right? And so I, I, you know, I like to reach back and grab cool things and then see where I can put them. And so I dare some, someone to tell me this isn't jazz, uh -huh. <laughs> right? Like it's, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's where you put it, it's what you do with it. And, and, I, I, and you know, I love to, to look, you know, to draw back and see what, you know, imagine what my, some of my heroes from the past like what would West Montgomery play on something like mm. that? You know, we know what Grant Grant Green would have done because uh -huh. he gave us some of it before he yeah. left. And he, That's right. And so the, these are the people that I admire the most, uh, and I just endeavor to, to. So I'll play some things uh, if I can, to show you kind of where I would go with that improvisation. Let's do that, Tommy. Stress a little further, come back a little bit. Yeah, I love how you, um, you know, what what you just talked about. You, you go back to the past, mm -hmm. and you pay that vocabulary forward. Yes, you know, absolutely. And and you know, kind of rooting things. I mean, it's part of the evolution of music. You know, and sure. and to to your earlier point, uh, we're we're probably you know, in a renaissance of music, you know, things are happening today that never happened before, largely because you don't necessarily have record labels, you know, categorizing things, you know, we don't really listen to radio like we did in the old days. Sure, sure. And artists are now kind of free to paint with whatever, whatever colors they want, you know, yeah. isn't that a cool thing? Well, it's a great thing. And I, and, and I think, and I think it's, 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 it was inevitable based on the technology that's come around that's presenting Young people with so much more information than you know. I, I always tell say when I when I went to, when I went to college, I had I had twenty records in my record collection. Mm -hmm. When I dropped my kids off, each one of them one of them had five thousand uh -huh. songs. A few years later, Davis had ten. You know, it's just you have you have access to so much more. Right. Um, learning all of that and having time to address it all, yeah. of course, is going to lead to it. it clear all playing yeah. to get playing you know, together. You know, that's such a great point. You were I, I I want you to expand on it. We were talking about how when we were kids mm. back in 1902, okay, <laughs> um, you know, it was all we could do to afford a dozen, maybe right. two dozen albums, and right. that was our musical world. You know, sure, sure. And how uh, you, and your sons, both young, incredible players. We're going to talk about that in a mm. sec. Um, you know, they have thousands of sure. songs and, and hundreds and hundreds of albums at their disposal. So the point that Mark made that really kind of resonated with me was think about how that influences one's musicality by exposing them to so much music that they can kind of pick up on, you know? It's amazing. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, I, you know, a lot of the records that are now... Uh, uh, you know, that, that required listening, you know, at, at these jazz programs were out of print when I was a kid. Yeah. So the albums were, I like, didn't even know, like these, some of these obscure Andrew Hill records, uh -huh. didn't, I didn't even know they were, that they existed. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a seven box CD set, a seven CD box set of, of Miles Davis, Live at the Plug Nickel. When I was a kid, there was, a, there was an album where they had selected four songs. From, that's all we thought was there. Uh-huh. There's six more CDs of music that, if it, so you know, my my Sunday, but you know, Mark would call, Dad, have you heard this? Like, what? No, I never heard that. Like, what record is that? You know, they keep turning me on to yeah, music, and yeah. so uh, uh, I always say when I, when I look at my kids, and when I, when I tell my kids, they're 29, 29 and 26. When I look at them, I say, that's what better than me looks like, yeah. and that's what, what we work so hard for to give to so that everything that you know that we that I learned and, and practiced and worked, I want to take, I want them to take that. And build on it. And build Don't on spend it. your whole life trying to recreate that. I've right. done it already. Yeah. You know, I, gi I give you this, and you take it and you take that forward. Very you can't cool. go forward without knowing where you've come from. No, exactly. But don't let that be the end of the journey. That's such a great point, man. So um, let's see. We're doing good on time. We're going to be able to do another situation. But, um, folks, do me a favor. If you're 
tuned in live here. You see that thumbs up button? You got to be digging <laughs> what Mark's saying, what he's playing. Please show your love. Go click that thumbs up button. It's right under the video there. We, we always try to get to 100. And, uh, and we count on you to help spread the love. Um, okay, more geography. Uh-oh, I don't know if I can pronounce this. Gally, Ga Gallipoli, Amsterdam, oh, uh, Connecticut, Holland, Reykjavik. Sorry, guys. Reykjavik. Hun Reykjavik. Yeah, okay. Reykjavik. Yeah. Have you played there? Uh, I have not, but okay. I really would go there. Uh, Hungary and Australia. Now, wow. think about the continents we've covered so yeah. far, you know. By the way, uh, one of True Fire's partners, Andrian Pervizov, is in Sofia, Bulgaria right now. <laughs> Yeah, right now. He's tuned in live right now. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, he uh, is on a bit of vacation yeah. and uh, keeps a home there. He lives here now, though, mm -hmm. but he's there tuned in. in yeah, tell him I had, well, I had a ball in Sophia. It treat, treated us so well. I was 1988. Beautiful yeah. people, right? Yeah. Just a beautiful culture. Oh, and, yeah. And it's so true what you were saying about, you know, some of the Eastern European countries behind the wall and... You know, we're really restricted in terms of sure. access to, let's call it Western music or or, sure. or or even the tools to learn how to play various, you know, yep. types of music. Right. Um, we've got time to do one more situation. OK. Um, I've marked six is one of my favorites. Could we do that one, Tommy? Situation number six. All right. Tell us all about it. Well, you know, I feel. I like things. Uh, I, I love it when when I when 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 a, when a rhythmic a, a rhythmic situation pushes forward. I mentioned this earlier. I, li I like it when when no matter no matter what the tempo is, you have you have you, you get the sensation of, of going downhill, you know. Mm. And it, it, but but it's relaxed. But you're constantly you're moving. For, you're not pushing. You're not fighting to get uphill. You're cruising downhill. And then. Um, what I like about that is I feel like my only job is not to mess it up, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like just uh -huh. don't screw it up. Uh -huh. Find, find, you know, find, find the, find the, find the beauty, find, find, the, find the hip spots, find the spaces, find the accent points, and then, and then connect them together, mm -hmm. and then get out of the way and, and, let, and let, and you know, and let, and let the ride continue. And so I, 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 bar I borrowed like one of those old Jack McDuff sort of vamps for this, you know. And so cool. you play the beat, I'll play along for you. All right. Let's see how you would solo over that. All right. Discover that stuff from oh, the, the, those man. organ trios. And, oh yeah, you know that would. That's how I first discovered George Benson. Sure, you know, before the Masquerade, and yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, man, um, it just can't seem to get enough of it. It's as fresh today as it was yeah. then. Right? Oh yeah, killer man. Yeah, you go to see the great Dr. Lonnie Smith. He's still playing now. And you go to hear him. Oh, he makes that organ talk. Man, he's just crazy, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask this trivia question one more time for folks. Um, we're giving away a hundred dollar gift card. Good as gold on true fire. 
The trivia question today is Mark played on a Jimmy Smith album back in 1996. How old were you, like seven years old? Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, 30th birthday. <laughs> who played drums on that album that was nicknamed Pretty? Okay, do not put the answer in the, the uh, chat thread there. Go click on that link, answer it there. We'll pull one person, give $100 away, okay? Um, also, there's another link. Um, we've got this course, The Soul of Jazz, up on pre-order already. Um, if you use that promo code listed in the chat thread, live mark, you can save 25% if you order it right now, which is a big savings on this five hour plus course wow. filled you guys with really the patient. stuff you're hearing today. <laughs> I mean, this is one of those. And you know, if you've tuned in to me regularly, you know, I don't say this for every course. This is one of the ones that's kind of a must have for the library, in my opinion, oh, thank you. because, um, you know, if you want to pick up licks, you know, more vocabulary, it, it's there, okay? If you want to hear some great stories about kind of the background and the roots of a lot of the music we love, it's also there. You're a great storyteller, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, but I think the most valuable, universal, whether you're a beginner, advanced, pro, whatever, um, aspect of this course is how you're guiding us to kind of hear what's going on in the music mm -hmm. in the way that you show us here's a beat look this is how i'm being informed by that beat and right. that's what's driving so many of us and i include myself you know kind of let's call it intermediate players we're not hearing what's going on and 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 thus we're not able to contribute to the conversation kind of right you know? right right sure. and your advice and insight there is it, it's just golden man and i love how you start with the drum beat you know there's no bass there it's right. just a drum beat and you build on that i i think whatever level you are and whatever style you are you're gonna th this is a must have for the library so i'm, I'm just thrilled what you came to town with man it's thank killer. you well, thanks for having me here man i i, I uh I'm really, I'm really pleased, and I, I appreciate your patience and guidance, you know, between you and Tommy. You guys, what, you guys helped me to bring out, you know, I think that, you know, the, the gems of what I, what, of my experience and share them. Well, know. we have uh, a lot of work to do together in the future, don't we? There's I so hope much so. Ground, I look forward to it. So man. much ground that we can cover. Yeah. Can you tell us, I, you know, I, I want to get to the gear and all that, but, mm -hmm. you know, you talk a lot about George Benson yes. as a friend, uh, as a teacher, as an inspiration. What are some of the things you learned from George that you can Oh man, take uh, uh, George George was a well a wellspring of of of, of information, history, uh, anecdotes and 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 he he's, he's someone who sees uh, the the LCD, you know, the lowest common denominator between all things. And he see he's he's really intuitive in that way. Um, the first thing he taught me um, was to he he would make he made a comment he said, "Man, sometimes you have a really roundabout way of getting there." <laughs> and you know, and because he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't want to hurt my feelings and say, "Man, it took you forever to get to this." But the point was, um, if if it takes you too long to make your point, whether yeah. you know it's in conversation or in music, yeah. then it's it's not that the point is not worth making. It's that you don't have that you don't you don't have command over it the, mm -hmm. the way you think you do. Mm -hmm. That uh, the simplest way to convey an idea is to be able to convey the idea, mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound like this. It's not kind of like this. It's either this or it isn't. Mm -hmm. And George, he, he, you give him eight bars, he give you eight bars of magic, really? not not three not three or four bars of meandering, mm -hmm. and you know, and two and a half. And so uh, that, and so I immediately identified that as, as as you know, squad goals. Be able to give eight. Just give me eight bars, and I promise I'm going to play something good. Uh -huh. And so you give me a whole, you know, an entire solo. I'm gonna, I, you know, my goal is to be able to make some magic, and mm -hmm. so. That was the first thing. The other thing was George. George, he challenged me to trust myself. Mm -hmm. He said, "Man, he, he, he always calls me little brother. He said, little brother, when 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 uh, uh, when you start to trust yourself, man, that's when you're really gonna play something." And I was like, "I, I, I thought it was when I really started practicing hard." Uh -huh. he, he said, "No, you, you, it's there, but you have to trust that you've worked hard enough to play it and just step out and play." It. I don't. I have no idea what you're what you're hearing, so you don't have to worry about me judging what you're playing versus what you intended to play. I don't uh -huh. know what that is. Uh -huh. But whatever you play, play it with just step out strong and, and, and give it and, and that'll and that'll expose whatever weaknesses you think are there and then you can edit from there. Mm -hmm. 
So trust, you know, having trust uh, in in my in what I hear, mm. trust trust you know trust the audience, trust people's, mm. you know, music. I mean, they, you know, they come to see you play. Like he said, mm. yeah, when I, I, I debuted at the Blue Note. He came and he said, uh, uh, first he brought the West Montgomery's guitar from the cover of uh, Moving West wow. to kind of blow my mind Are before the kidding? show started. <laughs> the double pickup, you know, uh, 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 violin color L five. I was just like, is that what I think it is? <laughs> oh my God! We took some pictures with it, you know. And then as I as, as they were, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Whitfield Court and he said, now listen, little brother. The place is packed because they already love you. So just relax. Incredible. Don't beat them over the head with your guitar, you know. And so it was not necessary to play everything you know. It's 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 necessary to know everything you play. You know, you know know what you love. You know what I mean? Do you know that in the course you tell a story? Could could you just quickly tell it again about how he took your guitar, about the tone being. You know. Oh sure, sure. Just oh, tell that yeah. Really oh, that was a, I love a heartbreaking that. story. <laughs> so yeah, you know, he he uh, he had suggested and and recommended me to play with Jack McDuff. You know, because uh -huh. he 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 thought he he was right. Playing around, playing at, at, at nineteen or twenty years old, spending all my time playing with my contemporaries, with kids my age, I I might be inspired, but there's not a wealth of experience to draw from. So he knew I need to be around one of the masters, and Jack was relentless in terms of uh, getting the best out of you. So I, um, I was up and I had, I had a, a really nice guitar and a nice little amp and a horrible tone. Mm -hmm. And I just would struggle and, and I was struggling and you know, and the organ is powerful. So I had to play loud and I feel like the louder I played it exposed all the things about my sound I didn't like, you know? And so George came in one night, you know, uh, shortly after I started, maybe a few weeks in, and uh, I knew he'd come to sit and he was going to play. And I was excited. I said, oh, this is great. First of all, George will sit in and adjust the knobs and fix it right. My sound will be great. And if something's wrong, he'll take me out and get me some new gear. Uh -huh. Like, this is great. Uh -huh. Either way, it's going to be a win-win uh -huh. for me, you know. Uh -huh. So George went up to the stage, and, and I turned my back for a minute, you know, to get out of the way. And he put the guitar on, and, and it looked like he, he, you know, turned some of the knobs and started playing. And, I mean, it was from the first note, it was pure magic. It was guitar player's bliss. It was just Every note was perfect. It sung. It was beautiful. He played two, you know, two great songs and handed back the guitar and, and, and walked away. And I looked, and none of the knobs had moved. And I was like, oh, no, maybe he put them back. And then I realized, no, <laughs> uh, it's not that at all. And he said, man, the sound is here. This is where, you know, I can take my sound anywhere because I spent years just figuring out how to hold the guitar, how to uh -huh. touch the guitar, how to, what kind of, how much pressure to apply, where, uh -huh. where, where the vibrato comes, when to strike the string, how, right. how to work on my accuracy. Uh -huh. so, I mean, you can't just buy a nice guitar and plug it into a nice uh -huh. amp, turn it on, and go. Yeah. He said, man, you know, uh, uh, otherwise everybody would have an amazing sound. Uh -huh. He said, and the gear is there to enhance your sound, but the core of, of your tone comes from it's your it's the sound of your voice uh -huh. that you hear through your imagination's uh -huh. ear, and then and then you 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 learn how to facilitate that and create that through you know the extension of you, which, which yeah. in this case, which is my hands and the instrument. What, what a great story, right? Because who hasn't gone out and gotten the exact same gear, strings, right. Right. pedals, right. amplifier, snap, their favorite anything, players? Right, right, right. They're like, well, it must be defective. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, go take it back to get. Center. This is broken. Right, Unbelievable. Right, right. Oh, um, man. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about that red guitar mm -hmm. and the other guitars that you play. And, okay. You know, what, you know, when you go out and gig, what are you bringing out? Start with the guitar. So this was made by a uh, great luthier, Stephen Marchioni, who shop uh, Marchioni Guitars is down in Houston, and I got to know him. He, uh, he made for years. He worked for Rudy Pensa at uh, at Rudy's Guitar Shop in New York, and he built a lot of those Pensa Shore uh, beautiful uh, um, strats in the nineties. Uh, and he opened his own shop in the city. Uh, the effects, the events of 9/11, kind of chased him out of New York, and he relocated to Houston, uh, which I think he's where he's from. But um, what's, what's the name of his shop now? Marchioni. Marchioni Guitars. Okay, maybe we can uh, publish a link because that is and, a phenomenal. Oh, I mean, he makes, he makes a beautiful instrument. And uh, uh, I had a Gibson L5 that got destroyed in a backstage accident mm -hmm. in Europe, and and uh, and someone, a friend of mine, introduced me to, introduced me to Stephen, and, and he made this for me, and, and I got it from him in '99, and I haven't let it go ever since. You asked for red. Yes, I did. I was I, well, we were originally was getting a traditional, you know, yeah. uh, wood color natural blonde yeah. guitar, and I saw George that night yeah. uh, on uh, Johnny Carson show. Uh -huh. Jay Leno, the Tonight yeah. Show with Johnny Carson. Uh, 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 maybe, maybe it was Jay Leno, and he was on there, and, and uh, one of those talk shows, he was, he was on there and, and uh, playing a bright red uh, uh, Ibanez GB5. You know, and I called him. I said, hey, George, man, man, that, man I got to tell you, that guitar, I got to get one of those. And he said, well, no way, little brother. You might not be ready for it. <laughs> Boy, hold on a minute now. Like, back him off me. You know, uh -huh. I might not be ready for a red guitar. And I, and I was like, what? I'm not 
not ready. Oh, I'll call you back. And I'm not there, ready like, for a red guitar. And I said, man, I, forget scratch the plans. I need you to go. I need you to go to Sherwin Williams, wherever you go. And I need the brightest, most electric, uh -huh. loudest red lacquer uh -huh. you can find. And Mark Yoni was in tears. He's like, no, you're going to ruin my guitar. Oh, I was like, my I was like God. Steve, you don't understand. This yeah. is life or death. Yeah. And when I got it, I remember the day I got the guitar, I practically like got in my car with no case and had the guitar in the passenger seat and drove to Georgia's house. I was like, ding dong, oh, here, man. buddy. Uh, I got one too, you know. Oh, and, and, uh, and, and then I mean, and George played it. He, and I remember he's like, man, brother, this sound, this guitar's got some sound, you know. Because <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's Stephen Apprentice with a violin maker. So it's got beautiful, it's lightweight, but it's strong and it yeah. speaks. And he and I have a few of his solid bodies and one of his and one of his uh, nylon strings and he's just a, he's a beautiful beautiful guitar beautiful luthier and a lover of, of mm -hmm. great guitars, mm -hmm. um, but you know it's it's a, it's an expensive valuable instrument mm -hmm. and so the airlines are not always mm -hmm. so cooperative mm -hmm. uh, um, and I and I wanted to partner up with someone who could make me a, something that was comparable mm -hmm. for a little, a, you know, for those let more, mm -hmm. more, a little more affordable mm -hmm. and even maybe and even maybe a little, a little sturdier in terms mm -hmm. of being roadworthy. Yeah. Uh, and um, I went to see my old buddy, at R Russell Malone, the great guitar mm -hmm. player. He was playing at a club in New York and he introduced me to this guy, Justin Friedman, mm -hmm. who works at the Angelico. Yeah. And, uh, and Justin and I got together. And Justin's wonderful and he's been in my corner he had he he uh, got, got he put a, a beautiful uh, full size 17 inch matte finished black uh, uh, Excel hybrid uh, 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 um, uh, prototype guitar. I like wide necks. So mm -hmm. He had a prototype guitar, um, just a beautiful uh, uh, arch top. But it's a little bit it's a little uh, large to travel with as well. So they're gonna grab that for you. Oh, awesome! It's coming. So um, we love those guys at D'Angelico. They're uh, no, so uh, I got it. Yeah, they're breathing kind of new life into the brand. Oh well, um, yeah, because they <laughs> are so committed, man. To sure, uh, you know, I used I used uh, George has a number of D'Angelicos mm -hmm. uh, from that he got from D'Angelico, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and um, I used his 18-inch New Yorker on, for mm -hmm. my, to record the Marksman, my very first record with. So well, I'm, I'm obsessed with anything that's with yeah. the, and I, and then and then uh, um, Justin had an answer for my travel problems. Yeah. He put this in my hands, and it's just beautiful. Yeah. This is the, the Excel SS, and it's uh, it's light, it's lightweight, but it's sturdy. It mm -hmm. sings. Um, I used it on a lot of the course, mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially for the rhythm parts because mm -hmm. it's, it's got you know the two pickups. And it's versatile, and I'm loving traveling with it. And hold and, that uh, up for the camera so they can get a close. So how, how's that there? Yeah. And you can see, and, and also if you notice, uh, my my guy at Master Strap. Uh, he uh, at my wife's urgence, uh, uh, urging. He got <laughs> he got, made me some some matching <laughs> leopard straps. Nice. So all you leopards out there, beware, we're coming for you. But uh, um, yeah, it's just uh, the guitar is gorgeous and it feels good. And I mean, a guitar this small that plays that sings that well, even unamplified, is is mm. you know, it's hard to find. And, and and you know, God forbid something does happen to it, you can get another one. Yeah. You know, certainly a lot quicker and a lot more affordably. Absolutely. And you know, and, and so I and it's nice to see a classic. You know, one of the classic American brands coming back around. Mm -hmm. You know, the Angelico guitars. So thank you, Justin. Thank you guys for that. And of course, Stephen, shout out. I just want to do. I do want to mention this because I know Stephen is probably hiring a hitman right now. Um, Come and get me. These dots are not uh, are not permanent. That's right. That's we just right. added so the neck is actually classical style. <laughs> uh -huh. We just added the dots there so that it would be easier uh, in this to direction. follow to you follow along with my fingers as they go flying around. Right. There. He probably <laughs> had a like, look at oh, that. And, right. oh, like, oh my God! What God. have you done to my neck? I like, know. You know. No, no. No. They're just well. They're just, next time you tell him, give us something that we could stick on there that you'd be proud of. You know. <laughs> right. 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 Um, when you go out, what's your back line and pedal board look like? So I I, um, I would like to shout out uh, Peter Melton and the folks at Quilter. Uh, they got I don't know if they can see this on camera to hold it up because it's just gorgeous. It looks like this. It's a cabinet and uh, uh, it's got the space for the head in the back there. I just love it to death. I use um, and I have a, a you know in a Pelican case I've got a pedal board that I use an IntelliTouch wireless, three Earthquaker pedals, the spatial delivery which is a, a sort of a compact mm -hmm. Ottawa. The, uh, the, the C machine, which is a combination sort of phase shifter and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, a phaser and and and, 
It has that old sort of 80s Schofield-esque uh, slapback sound mm. that I love so much when I'm for certain effects. Um, I use a way huge overdrive pedal. I'm not a, I'm, I don't use a lot of distortion, but what I do, I want, it's hard to find something that goes really well with the hollow bodies. Mm -hmm. And this, this, is, this, it, it, this is really transparent and seamless. The Beautiful. swollen pickle, I use, um, in the front, and I use the Avalanche Run, mm -hmm. which is the Earthquaker uh, combination reverb and uh, analog reverb and, and analog delay and I and then I use my favorite of all effects pedals of all time is the line six filter modeler pedal they don't really make it anymore there's still some available but it's got all those old 60s 70s and 60s and 70s filter you know fil and I, then I use the quilter interblock 45 head built into the pedal board so I just carry this around and if I not if I don't have my quilter cabinet with me then I have a rental cabinet I, I, I always okay. insist can you show that quilter again? Sure. We, um, we love we we love quilter. We yeah, have all these several of those. Um, uh, I have actually myself the Overdrive 200, which is oh yeah, unbelievably yeah, versatile. Yeah. And we got hip to that. I'm trying to remember the artist that came in, so I won't mention a name because I'm not really sure. But he just brought it's his little amp, yes. man. Yeah. It, and it'll fit it right sits into in the that slot, cabinet. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it sits in the slot The there. sound is incredible. Yeah. And the range from clean to distorted, yeah. they're they're one of my favorite companies out there. Oh, yeah, and this is really clever the way that, because I've got the Pro Block and the and the rope and the 101 head yeah. slides right in. You can slide no, them out and bottom. killer. And they're good, good people. Peter was so like, you know, he knew you were coming in, wanted to make sure you had the right thing. Yeah, yeah he's He amazing. bent over backwards, man. Uh, Peter, I appreciate you, brother. They're good people. If you haven't checked out Quilter, you got to check them out. I highly Number recommend one. them. Uh, and D'Angelico, I got to tell you, you know, we went to, the, when we saw you at the Blue Note, actually yes. that day we were right. at Right, when I was, I was with Robert Glesper, exactly. Um, and so um, they're good people and they, they really, you know, care about their artists and yes. they care about their instruments. And finally, they've managed to put D'Angelico's in reach of, you know, those of us oh, that can't yeah. afford the, you know. Right. If you haven't got $100,000 or something in a collection. It's crazy, right. man. It's yeah, just sure. crazy. Absolutely. Um, strap on your red guitar. We're going to play out. But before we do that, a bit, just a little bit more of housekeeping. Number one, we've got to 100 thumbs up. Hey, thank you. Thank you very, very much uh, for that. Number two. Raymond, <laughs> who's one a true fire artist from Amsterdam, I mess up his name like you can't believe. So, Raymond, uh, I'm gonna try one more. It's Raymond Nyenhaus. Okay. Okay. From Amsterdam, right. Nyenhaus. Okay. Did I get it, Raymond? And my apologies for messing that up so many times in the past. For those of you that haven't checked out Raymond's true fire courses, please do so. The cat is also unbelievable. Um, again, you've got, uh, oh, I've got to announce the winner of the, uh, trivia thing. Zach, do you have that winner? Can you post them? Um, a hundred dollar gift card goes and we'll give you the correct answer as well. And the correct answer is who? Bernard Pretty Purdy. There you go, man. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you answer that question correctly by following the link, you're in the drawing. And the winner is coming soon. We'll post it here, and we will get you a $100 gift card. And you better spend at least a part of it on this soul jazz course, man. Amen. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, you've got links to the pre-order. You've got um, go, go to Mark's site, uh, which is? MarkWhitfield.com. Okay. And the car is Mark. Oh, oh, and show the album, man. So oh, yeah. I am so excited about this. It, run it down. So, um, you know, I, we, we did mention my kids, uh, my two sons, Mark Whitfield Jr., who's now 29, and Davis Whitfield, who's now 26. Uh, both former Berkeley grads. Mark is a, is, a, is a great drummer. Davis is a great piano player. We have a family band record. It's called Grace. And it features also uh, Yasushi Nakamura on bass and our cousin Cy Smith, the wonderful singer. Um, it's a dream come true. I mean, I, my, you know, I played with my I played music with my kids since they could since they could stand up, you know, and and, and um, from when we first started playing together, and traveling, we do some concerts and touring. We've been to Japan and South America stuff together. And, uh, uh, I could barely play for looking at them smiling and grinning, you know. And and then now I can't keep up because they're so good. 
but that, right. uh, that was the point, you know. Um, and and just to be able to keep music in the family. It's funny. Little Mark was playing. Little Mark. Mark Jr. was playing in uh, uh, in, in Arizona last week with a great saxophone player, woman Tia Fuller. And he said he called me. He's like, Dad, uh, uh, I need Uncle George's number. And he, you know, George Benson lives out there. And he called George, and George's wife went to see him play. And he sent me pictures of him hanging out with George backstage. And I had tears. I was like, Oh my God, that's my son. Like I, oh, you know, man. I remember George used to take me and the boys out for, for sushi, you know, yeah. <laughs> in Jersey. And now they. They've grown up, they're men, they're playing, they're doing great. And they're carrying forward the tradition. And also the guitar player uh, that plays with them, he's just a beast. Yeah, these, these young guys are just are so good. Uh, uh, and and so and what, another thing I know, I'm talking a lot about that, but through my sons and, and you know, because the, 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 the scene is always close, it's a small world. It's, it, it may be split generationally, but within their, with, you know, in their age group, it's a very, so I get to meet all these great young musicians and, and um, that's one of the things that sort of inspired what, what I consider uh, uh, my own sort of my own just new phase of my evolution, you know, trying to get hip to what's happening uh, and, and figure out how to how to uh, how to find you know reestablish my footing and find a voice in today's music, mm -hmm. and and, I, and I'm, I'm inspired to do that because so many old so many older guys like myself and you get sour to what's happening like oh these guys don't play like we used to they don't right. blah 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 right, you right, know right, right. and then and then if you just put that aside for a second there's magic in, in so many places and and, and just and one of the things that I say that I I, com I compliment members of you know this generation you know musicians under 35 for instance yeah. nowadays is all of the masters most of them are gone. Like if you if you so all you have now are these teaching aids or or records or videos. Right, right. You, you know I used to be able to go out and see people play. <laughs> right. You know I, yeah, man, are you kidding yeah. me? I got you know I I didn't just hear Elvin Jones around. I used to you know I went to see him play at a club. Right. I, you know I just made, you know I, I uh, told just imagine how you know how you grow and develop to become a great musician nowadays. Yeah. People that are doing it deserve a lot of, a lot of credit for the work that they put in. And I'm and I'm grateful to be part to be to be around and be well, part of it. You should be very proud you know? of, of yourself as well because you are definitely someone that does in, inspire, um, educate, guide, um, and uh, pay it forward, man. You know you're thank very you. very generous, and we can't thank you enough for sharing what you've shared with us here uh, this week. And I can't wait for you to come back, man. Hey man, I'm thinking about that okay. already. Thank you. And, and we're going to stock up on a lot of food. This, Good, this, <laughs> this guy can eat like nobody's business. You, <laughs> you, you see, it's stuff. like everyone wants a little salad <laughs> because they got to shoot in the afternoon. <laughs> this guy can eat some food. That's okay? right, baby. That's great. All, uh, all right. right. Um, how about pick a tune, play us out and thank all you right. so much. And thank you everybody for tuning in and contributing. We really, really appreciate it. All right.